Your lives are beautiful. Hallelujah. God has beautified you with his righteousness. Your path is upward and forward only. Today is a date with destiny. We have prayed concerning this meeting. And the heavens are set. The clouds are full of rain. Tonight they will empty themselves upon you. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Are you expectant? Reverend Bumi is tested. She's been through the fire and out. She has faced the challenges that purify. The fires, rather than get consumed, she got purified. Everything she will share with you tonight is from her life. This is not some, you know, principles you just go and glean from some books. And then you come and teach and impress people. If you've not gone through it, you probably don't know it. But this one has gone through it. And she knows it. And tonight, out of her depths, she will bless. With Jesus joy in your heart. Join me as we receive Reverend Dr. Bumi. Like you mean it. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for coming. On behalf of your future self, I say thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Because tonight is not a mean meeting. It's a date with destiny. And you will not recover from the things that will happen to you tonight. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. I honor the Lord for the very beautiful things he, he keeps doing in my life. And um, I feel really honored that he would continue to do the things that he does in my life. Hallelujah. And every time I stand up to speak, I return all the glory to him. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to be sharing about, you know, what the Lord has placed in my, in my, my heart. And I'm going to be using a lot of my experiences. I'm going to be sharing with you my journey, my failure and my success journey. And when I look at my life and, you know, what I am, what I'm becoming, because there's still a lot, a lot more. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, that's ahead. You know, I, I feel very humbled that God placed over me 
a man, a father, to guide me on this path. I am humbled, I feel privileged, and without mincing words, every single thing I'm going to be sharing with you um, in terms of my experience, you know, lessons learned, you know, and transferable wisdom Reverend is in it every step of the way. So I stand here as a woman who has been made by her husband. And I... The cap fits him very perfectly. And when I say, it's not a cliche when I say that you know, my husband is my hero and that for all of the successes that I can remember in my life, he literally prays me into them, gives them to me, encourages me into them, funds me into them, does everything to me into them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he, he just wants to go behind because he wants me to be in the limelight. But I just want to make it clear again tonight, the person who's responsible for the woman that stands before you. Could you please, if you don't mind, oblige me with a standing ovation and put your hands together for our reverend and our pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Daddy. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready? God bless you, dear one. I love that song. That's my song. song belongs to me. <laughs> my life is beautiful. Say my life is beautiful. Say my life is a tapestry of beauty and harmony. Say the best things in life are reserved for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, the goal of this meeting is for you to be able to appreciate the composition of success. I want you to be able to embrace resilience as, uh, in the adventure of life. I want to, by the Spirit of God, be able to inspire in you an unbreakable spirit, an unstoppable persona. <laughs> you know, such that it doesn't matter what comes against you, you don't back out, but rather you see it through and you deliver the success. Not just for you, but for the generations that need to hear you. But for the people you've been born to impact, you need to, you need to begin to see life as beyond you. Many times when you try to give up, you just need to remind yourself that your purpose is way beyond you. And that the reason why you have to be what God has said you should be, it's way, way beyond you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So many times you just need to think about the lives that are depending on you walking in purpose. The lives that are dependent on you doing what God has called you to do. And many times that's, you know, a very strong reason to want to go the path. Hallelujah. So I want to be able to inspire this in you. And most importantly, I want to show you the place of a personal walk with God and the leading of the Holy Spirit in achieving the greatness in your career, in whatever it is you set, set your hands to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm talking today about maximizing multiple misses maximizing multiple misses my failure and success journey unedited literally it's going to be unedited hallelujah we'll see how god takes us and if we have time for questions otherwise you know it's just you know I, this meeting is just going to bless you hallelujah amen it's just going to bless you dear holy spirit i thank you i thank you for your presence here i thank you because you have found me a worthy vessel lord i empty up all myself and i ask that you speak through me lord and that by your word this evening your people will have clarity in the name of jesus i pray that they will be inspired they will be catapulted to new realms of glory in the name of jesus oh thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit come on i just want you to pray in tongues a bit Leke se te li aru shata la babari aradundi. Leko se te li bo she te li kata la bababara dan masundi li aradundi. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Le se te i koshta li brakat malanda zanta li aradundi. Oh, thank you, Father. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. You see, there's no one way of measuring success. There's no one size fits it all approach by which we measure success. Okay? Success is relative. It's person specific. It is instruction directed. It is not absolute. So what success means to one person, many times, is not what success means to another person. Hallelujah. And for us believers, success specifically is achieving the things that God has placed in your heart. Okay? So, you know the passion in your heart. You know the dreams you nurse. You know the things you think about and you say, this is me. You know the things that light a fire in your heart. You know how much you tell yourself of the books you're going to write, of the songs you're going to write, of the people who are going to hear from you and receive life, of how you're going to go the length and the breadth of your career simply because you want to have a platform for ministry. You know all of those beautiful things that you think about. Can I please let you know that it's God who is at work in you, both to will and to do of his, of his good pleasure. Do you know that? So success in the context that I'm going to be speaking tonight, okay, is what God has laid in your heart, what you know you should be achieving. Praise God. The pictures that God has laid in your heart, what you know you want to do. Praise the Lord. The things, the things that you are passionate about, the things that you know, you know, if I do this, you know, they wake you up anytime in the night and you're like, this is my life, okay? So that's what I'm referring to when I'm talking about the things, the goals that you want to achieve. Hallelujah. So many times we think that success, some people say that person is an overnight success, right? And then it is said, if truly it is an overnight success, then may maybe that must have been the longest night. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as overnight success. And I said earlier that many times because, you know, the first time you hear about what people are up to is when they succeed at it. There's a tendency for you to underrate the processes that they went through. And then you put so much pressure on yourself because you want to achieve similar magnitudes of success. And when you're unable to achieve commensurate success, you put yourself under pressure, you're frustrated, and many a times you want to throw in the towel, right? But today we are really going to have a closer look at success. What really is success composed of? Success is a composition. It is made up of different things. And tonight, I'm going to, can you help me with this, please? And tonight, I'm going to be introducing to you, you know, what I would like to, I would like to say success is an iceberg. Can, I, can you please help me with this, please? Thank you. Hallelujah. So I want, to, I want to speak on success as an iceberg. How many of you know what an iceberg is? Good. So an iceberg is like um, a part of a glacier that is broken off or is carved off, Okay. And when you see the picture of an iceberg, typically it looks something like, like this, right? You have the tip of the iceberg, which is what people commonly see. And then you have the whole bit, right? So I'll just repeat myself. Success is an iceberg. Success is not the tip of an iceberg. So this is a picture of an iceberg. This is the tip, okay? And this is like the other part. This is the body, right? Okay? So um, for, I, I don't know, can you see from there at all? Okay, good. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the tip of the iceberg is like 10%, okay? And what is hidden beneath the water, what is unseen is like 90%, okay? Now, the iceberg... This stop part, which people see, and this is so massive, and that's why this is such a problem to ships on, on the ocean, right? Because they can't even see. How many of you remember the story of Titanic? Now, this one costs some, okay? Okay, so, <laughs> so you have the tip of the iceberg. So the tip of the iceberg is what is seen, is what is celebrated, is the glam, okay? It's the 12 seconds of Toby Amusan that you saw and celebrated. The tip of the iceberg. Everybody sees it. Everybody celebrates it. Everybody talks about it. Everybody sees the money you've got. People see you when you spray people money in, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the party and they're like, he's wadded, right? And then this base is the other part of success. Success is a composition. 
And this base is the other part of success that is unseen. It is uncelebrated. Nobody knows what's there. You alone. It's your place of loneliness. This is the limelight. This is the place of loneliness. But then have you heard that loneliness is the birthing place of giants? This part is where you have the hard work. Is where you have the rejections. Is where you have the multiple misses. It's where you have the failures. It's where you have the sleepless nights. It's where you have headaches and eye aches because you've been staring into the computer 20 out of 24 hours of the day. The stress, the pressure, you need to perform. The pressure from parents, all the things that are unattractive, okay? Uncelebrated, all of the hard work, this is it. This place also represents the output, okay? This place represents the input. I agree with you that we can determine our output by our input. But can I quickly propose that in some way, you do not have direct impact on your output. I'll explain what I mean. You're going for an interview. What you can do is all you can do. You prepare, you do everything and all of that. Once you go for the interview and you leave that place, the outcome is no longer dependent on you. Anything can happen. Toby Amusan prepared all her life. And then she went to run. At the point where she was running, it was no longer up to her. So all of the imputes, all of the work she had done was up to her. It was done in silence. Nobody knew her. Okay? But now, the output was not going to be up to her in a way because you don't know how other people have prepared. It depends on so many things. Environmental conditions. Are you going to be the best candidates? How many people applied? And they need just one person. So all you can do is all you can do. And then the output is just there. Praise the Lord. And then the input. This is the input. We are going to try to analyze a question afterwards. Seeing that we have in some way not so much of a direct impact on the output but more 100% on the input why do we talk so much only about this and not only about this and one of the things I aim tonight is for us to normalize talking about our misses normalize talking about our failures not because it defines us as failures but because it is a composition of success you will see after now that success is not this. Success is this. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Success has a foundation. This is the foundation. You can't say this is success. You say this is success. The tip of the iceberg does not exist without this. So, the tip of the iceberg is what you do. It's what you achieve. Is what you acquire is what is visible. But this part is what you become. So why the foundation speaks about what you become? This speaks about what you do, what you achieve, what you buy, what is evident. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Bible says, that gold is precious, but our faith is much more precious than gold. And if gold can be tried in the fire, it can be made to go through the heat, it can be permitted to change state, it can be permitted to go through, you know, difficult times, just because it is coming out as something more refined, something of greater value, then the Bible says, how much more your faith? You see, the rejections, the hard work, the failure, the misses, the sleepless nights, the discipline, every other thing that you go through that it seems nobody understands. You're trying to communicate your vision to people. They just don't get it. Okay? Maybe it's too big for them. 
they are not on your level of awareness. And don't kill yourself if, if people can't get what you're trying to communicate to them. It takes time. Many times it looks like the tip of the iceberg is a flash in the pan. And then, but this is where the real work is. And many times this can take lots of time. I ask again, seeing that this is where the majority of the work is, especially where we can control and takes the longest of time and has the largest proportion, why do we speak less of this and only glorify this? I've often asked myself as a researcher, why is there not a journal to publish negative results? Because when you work in the lab, as I do, the majority of the things you do don't work. Especially if you are doing something novel. If you are trying to repeat something or to prove that something is working, that's different. But when you're working on something novel as a PhD demands and has been my experience the last couple of years, seven years precisely, you will know that many things you do in the lab doesn't work. Don't work. And then you ask yourself, I've done this, 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 this. It hasn't worked. So why is there not a journal that I can publish what hasn't worked? Failure isn't celebrated. So I don't blame you when you don't like to talk about it. And social media doesn't help. Have you ever wondered why on LinkedIn, the only things you see are, I am happy to start my new role as. And then they have just completed a certification and they show you the certificate. I am happy to have completed. I went to a conference. A gig, gig, gig. Show off. Have you ever wondered why on Facebook people don't post when they eat beans and gari? It is the only day they manage to put fried rice that they will post it. Every day they'll be eating anyhow. They've not been eating healthy. They will not post it. The only day they go money, go gym. They will post it when they are sweating. You now in your small corner with the night never allow you to charge your phone. Be by belle for another person's fake life. On Instagram. The most perfectly edited video they go put on there for you. The day they met celebrity they will put it there for you. <laughs> Don't put yourself under pressure. If you find yourself here, you are succeeding. Because success is an iceberg. You're succeeding. You're in good company. Success is an iceberg. Success is not the tip of an iceberg. You need to be patient with your process. Don't throw the towel too soon. You need to push. Because many times before people make it, they have loads of times where they failed. They just don't tell you. Do you understand? So when people discuss with you the times where they failed, appreciate it. I'm going to be showing you some, some, some private rejection letters. I'm going to be showing you so that you will know that it's, it's not just like you just press the button and it works. Sometimes you grow. Sometimes we win. Sometimes we learn. You first need to become. You are growing. Our Reverend has told us, when you go up, you can come down. But when you grow up, you stay up. <laughs> Haven't you noticed that people who are only interested in the tip of the iceberg, they want to make money quickly. No time to waste. Such as our brothers we are trusting we come into the light. Like Yahoo Tins. They want to make it. But they're not interested in the process. Okay? But what they miss is the building of becoming that sustains success. So you are not just 
popping out as a success. Otherwise, that's how they will pop you out like a balloon. You are building integrity. You are building strength of character. You are building transferable wisdom. You are building everything buildable. You are becoming tough. Such that by the time you start experiencing these things, it doesn't get to your head too much. And you have the strength of character. Not just to go up, but to stay up. You can maintain success. You can be a transgenerational success. That's the idea. It's never an overnight success. Don't kill yourself. Forget social media. Build your life. Focus on your life. Build your life. You are doing well. You are doing well. If you are struggling, if you are failing, if you are doing something, it's a proof that you're not giving up. Just don't quit. And you're a good company. See, I'm in good company. You're in good company. Hallelujah. Success is an iceberg. You know, I hear that there's a photo studio in Lagos where that is made with the design of a private jet. People will go there. Go and snap picture there. They will put it on your Instagram page, on your where you go see them. You now, you have never entered plane, not to talk of private jets. And then you will start questioning the authenticity of your calling. Why I never hammer? Look at that person. Look at that person. Remember, I told us you don't have mates. Okay, so don't compare yourself with anybody. Imagine somebody goes to that photo photo studio now in Lagos, snaps and comes. And, and you are you imagine yourself killing yourself over something that is not real. Do you see that they, they are more fakeness? Is that a correct word, my lord? Fakeness, uh -huh. Than they are you need to be real, you need to be genuine. And you need to appreciate that many things are not genuine. Do you know that many adverts that you see for food? Do you know they are not they are not what you think? I often wondered. See. You roast a turkey. The turkey will still be fine. It will still be full. It will be fresh. How possible is that? You go and roast it in your oven. Something will shrivel. It will shrink. Something will happen. Now nah, I lie. They no roast that turkey. They painted it with polish. You are, you are killing yourself that you finished roasting your Christmas turkey. It didn't come out like that. And you are, you are telling yourself you are not a good cook. You see what you are comparing yourself against? Are you seeing? Say it's a matter. <laughs> we need to normalize talking about that. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We need to normalize it. Okay? And when people share with you where they are falling, where they are, you know, if you laugh at them, you're a small mind. Make it make it be, be open. Let people be able to discuss this thing with you without you looking down on them. It's normal. Do you understand? When we normalize this thing, before you know anything, you'll be achieving all these things. You won't even know. You know real success? When people are telling you your success, when you're like, really? Not the one that you will do gra-gra, do gra-gra, you will do... You not even notice. Don't try to push yourself forward. Stay in the course where God has put you. Don't give up. Okay? One of my lovely friends, Dr. Ini, when I put up this, um, um, the flyer online, she messaged me. She was like, oh, that is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. She said, because many people are just interested only in the glam and they forget the grit. Success is glam and grit. But grit before glam. Success is a process. What do we mean when we say something is a process? We simply means something comes before it. Hallelujah. There's no overnight success. A little focus on our wonderful compatriot, Toby Amosa. A little focus on her. Can I have the hand up, please? Thank you. So when you see this picture, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Shout out, anybody. Champion. What else? Success. Hallelujah. 
you see a record breaker you see the first nigerian world champion in the athletics event some of you who like the money think of the hundred thousand dollars aka 65 million naira. you see fame you see sudden international renown not be so and many a times all you think about toby is the 12 seconds of fame can i tell you that toby is 25 years old can I tell you that 12 seconds is, an, is a super micro, sub microscopic fraction of her life? Do you know that she has other things that she has done in her life? But maybe because the first time you heard about her was when she succeeded, you just commonize it or you just look down on the process. But I want you tonight to appreciate the place of process and tell yourself, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to see this through until I deliver this success. Not just because of me. It's more than you, I've told you. <laughs> it's more than you. You need to have big picture. Many times you want to give up, but you need to think it is beyond me. It is beyond me. There are people who need you to get up and do the crusades. There are people who need you to get up and get the money. The world needs you rich. The world needs you influential. You know what I'm talking about? It's important. Don't deceive yourself. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> so Toby is 25 years old. If we wanted to look at the success of Toby, did you know that when before she traveled to the US, she was told that she couldn't do athletics because she had a small body. Did you know that part? You know, many people got interested in her life, including me, you know, and I began to, you know, when I see people who are successful, I want to read a, a bit about them. And that's a good, um, it's a good culture. Okay. That's a good thing. You want to know where are they coming from? Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So she said that she was too small. She, her body, her, she, her body size was not good enough for an athlete. And were they right or wrong? Imagine if she listened to that. She, in her own words, she, she, she had a lack of encouragement. Men who didn't encourage her. Are you here and you are telling yourself, the only thing I need in this life just for people to encourage me. Can't they see that I'm being hardworking? I'm doing... Nobody has ever encouraged me in this life. Keep quiet. Encourage yourself in the Lord. No encouragement. You are here. And that's success. Okay? You are succeeding. Okay? You are succeeding. If it's not about the goal, it's about the growth. Something is working. If it seems like the goal is not working, the growth is working. And you are becoming somebody that will make all of this happen. Do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hallelujah. She talked about lack of right equipment. There are some of you who say, I'm so talented. All I need is for somebody to just give me the right equipment. If somebody can just give me one laptop now, my life is made. I don't have laptop. The reason why I'm like this is because I don't have laptop. Keep quiet. Am I saying it's not a real challenge? No. I'm just telling you that people push against all of these. Against all odds. People push. So you want to give up because your uncle rejected you. Not so. Oh, and I love her focus. When she was a freshman at University of Texas, El Paso, she said, which is now a common, you know, uh, a common statement that's accredited to her. Unknown now, but someday I will be unforgettable. I will persist until I succeed. Unknown, freshman, University of Texas, El Paso. Nobody knew her. So, can you now encourage yourself to know that you are not silly when you say what you say to yourself before the mirror? Don't listen to people who don't have big minds. You are not stupid. You are not silly. You keep saying it. <laughs> if you listen to the testimony of our friend, the Jamaican friend, how many of you watched that video? The, 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 the lady literally said, Toby spoke this into being. Toby spoke it into being. She was always speaking it. She called herself the incoming champion. That's what she said. You need to go and listen to that video by a Jamaican friend, a co-competitor as well. And she said, I'm so happy for Toby. She literally spoke it into existence. So you need to keep saying it. You need to keep believing it. You need to put the vision board where you see it every time. Many times you're going to get discouraged. So that's why it has to be in front of your mirror. So that you see it every day. You appreciate where you are going. You tell yourself, nobody may believe in me now. But I know where I'm going. And you don't need to, you don't need to explain yourself to anybody. Sometimes the, the challenge can come from our parents. 
Sometimes the challenge can come from the people who are closest to us. Not because they just want to be a thorn in your flesh intentionally, but because they are not privy with the, with the dealings of the Spirit of God upon your life. So they want you to have a good life, but you know you're not made for ordinary. They want you to have a good life, but you know you are made for better. They want you to have, you know, just marry, settle, and all of that. But you know that, no, I refuse to be ordinary. There is a path that is set ahead of me. Hallelujah. And people who become extraordinary, their path is not normal. It doesn't go normally. There are lots of twists and turns. Many times they become pace setters because they go away where everybody's like, you know, that's a foolish path. But they go because they are led of the Holy Spirit. I said at the beginning, success is instruction directed. It is person specific. So you don't just go about telling everybody what God has told you to do. Only those who have a large heart or those who have been there before. No other person should be hearing what God has told you to do. And that's why they say conception and pregnancy and all of that happens in the dark, right? Until the baby is big enough and mature enough and then the baby comes out. Imagine if all of that is happening in the light. People are just going to get disgusted and, you know, but it happens in the dark. All of those things that you don't want to be associated with, they are very important. They form the foundation for the success that you want to hammer. Praise the Lord. I love the resilience and consistency because when she made that step, she didn't just go to bed, right? So, you know, it's not just a flash in the pan. You know, you can see consistency. Can I have the next slide? You can see consistency in all in everything she did. Hallelujah. You can see, okay, that's quite little now. Um, the print's quite tiny. But you can see how consistently sometimes she came forth. Sometimes, you know, she came forth twice. You know, so many things. But she was not, she was not discouraged. Hallelujah. So you keep doing it. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Are we together? Are you ready? Oh, thank you. I'm fine. Put up my picture, please. <laughs> hey, dim the light. Is it clear? Ah, okay. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> Can you see me? You see, as I'm fine, Doctor, Mrs. Bumi, Busola, Omorotima, PhD, Molecular Microbiology, University of Nottingham. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please be seated. My life is beautiful, Abby. Yes. Very, very sweet, Abby. Just check out now. Award winning consistently. The top one, 2017, winners, young entrepreneurs, scheme, University of Nottingham, representing the University of Nottingham at the Royal Society, London. Um, the one below, winner, three mini thesis competition, 2018, uh, an international PhD competition where you need to present your PhD thesis in three minutes to a non-expert audience. I won it. 2019, Andrew Hendry Award, an award given to the contribution you have made to the postgraduate community in the University of Nottingham. I have a number of awards. I can't talk about all of them. I'm zooming in to my most recent, okay? So I would, I would only speak from PhD upwards. Of course, you know, you know, by the grace of God, I have, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For the... Praise God. By the grace of God, we would like to know. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. Okay, we thank God. Let me just say very briefly. So my um, my undergraduate, you know, I had first class microbiology, best graduate student, department of microbiology, best graduate student, faculty of uh, of of life sciences, right? Or was it faculty of sciences then? Science, the Faculty of Science, it, it wasn't merged as at then, praise God. Uh, my secondary school, best graduate student in the sciences, NECO. Then, um, MSc, best graduate student, MSc Distinction Food, Microbi Food Production Management. Best graduate student in the class of over 80 international students. So won the award, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so now, let's... Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Praise God, sir. <laughs> so we move on, okay? Somebody say, my life is beautiful. Somebody say, my life is a tapestry of beauty and harmony. Okay. The journey hasn't always been beautiful, okay? So um, many of you have shared with you some of my, you know, undergraduate testimony um failure stories and all of that but seriously because of time and where we are going i just want to focus you know from my phd upwards okay okay so praise god for that so when you see this what do you see success what else do you see victory isn't it you just like you say ah but your life is beautiful i don't like your life your life is looking like it's perfect my life is not perfect You see, I'm <laughs> oh yeah, that is what you are seeing now. I think see what you see, iceberg, tip of iceberg. That's what you have seen now. That's the the one that shows the one I didn't really have too much input. You know, like the outcome was it, I've explained to you. The one that looks like a flash in the pan. The one that looks like anything she just touched, all the work, anything she just applied, they go just they give her. Not be so. Oh yeah, number one, I want to share with you embarrassment. See embarrassment. embarrassment. Uh huh. I left the shores of Nigeria in 2015 to go to University of Nottingham for my PhD in molecular microbiology. I had no prior knowledge in molecular microbiology. I just saw it as, you know, you know, the area for the future. And I said, I'm going to go into this. I remember the first meeting I had with my supervisor. I sat down in that office and it's so vivid how the meeting went. He was explaining to me his computer was facing him. And then I was just right there. And then he was explaining to me what I was going to do in my PhD. He was explaining to me, this is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do, that these are the genetic, genetic tools that you're going to be using. You know, these are the genes you're going to be knocking out. He was talking and talking, but boy, did I feel he was talking like from there and I was here. I told him, sorry, sir, I didn't get it. And then he was like, okay. He went down. And then he explained to me, I don't get it. He turned his computer to face me, came here, explained everything to me, looked at me. I don't get it. When he finished, I was embarrassed. But before I left there, I said, I'm sorry I don't get this now, but I'm a fast learner and I will get this. Just give me time. You need to be confident in yourself to know that even though you may not have it at that time, the Spirit of God is in you, enabling you. You have the, don't say you are not disciplined. You have the discipline and you put yourself to it and you will get it. Hallelujah. Any day, any time, hard work and discipline always beats talent. So if you are hard working, if you are committed, you will beat somebody who has the talent but is doing nothing about it and if you like, it's just my gift. Don't be so. So that's how I left his office. <laughs> Shame. I was given an undergraduate project to brush myself up. You didn't hear me. I say I went for PhD. They gave me an undergraduate thesis for me to come up to speed. Uh huh. Now you understand what I'm talking about. Have you ever felt like You asked a foolish question. 
And then when you finish asking the question, you don't just realize that the question was foolish. You begin to think whether you're actually stupid. <laughs> because you feel that this is something... And I will always tell myself, Bumi, you are doing this for a purpose. You will only look foolish when you start. With time, you will think this and you will be to swallow your shame. Take responsibility for your ignorance and learn. If you are ignorant, you are ignorant. Whether you ask to know, your ignorance stays with you. You will swallow it up and you will learn. It doesn't matter who's teaching you. We heard from our reverend. Don't be too proud to learn from the proud. Even if they are doing you like this, your madam is doing you like this, humble yourself. When you finish learning, carry your kaya and go. Leave her or him with their pride. You have become a better person. What really is your goal? Can we, can we, can we extract what your goal is? Is it popularity or is it growth? You need to begin to focus on what's important. You need to get better. And many times in the process of getting better, you need to get down, your hands get dirty. People will laugh at you because they expect that you were supposed to know this. It doesn't matter. You don't know it, you don't know it. So, embrace it and learn. You know, I have normalized asking people to repeat themselves if they use a word that I don't understand. I usually say, forgive my ignorance, but I don't seem to understand what you have said. Sometimes, many times, I'm happy because I've learned something. Some other times, I feel foolish because it's something I ought to have known. Am I now going to say because sometimes it's something I ought to have known and I've exposed to somebody that I'm not as smart as I thought I was? Now stop learning. What is your priority? The way people see you or that you get better. Do you really want to get better or are you just about like the people on social media who just want to paint this in this? Is your foundation deep? Or do you just want to be like that building that the Bible describes? You just, you just go up and then when the winds, because challenges will come in life and then you can't, you can't be sustained. Your building collapses. Are you building deep? Are you building short? Are you concentrating on growth? Are you telling yourself what matters is that I get better? If that is your focus, you will learn anyhow. You learn. You have to learn. Stop deceiving yourself when you tell yourself, I will check Google. I will check the dictionary. You will not do it. You say, somebody use the word. I don't want to say I will check. How many of the Google have you checked? I bet you that your phone and your note is filled with, I will check Google, I will check. Now lie. Many times you don't do it. And again, even more painfully, is how you miss brilliant opportunities to network with real people rather than looking into your phone. We are still humans. Forgive my ignorance. Please, what does that word mean? What did you mean by that idiom? I didn't get it. Please, explain. You are getting better. You are learning. Do you understand what I mean? I felt embarrassed. Each time I had to go to the lab and I have to ask, how do you do this? How do you do that? I didn't know how to run a jail. I didn't know how to use basic molecular microbiology tools that they were playing with. It was embarrassing for me. I went home many times and this is the second thing I struggled with, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is when you feel like you're not as good as people think you are. You're a fraud. And people will soon discover you for who you are. And when they discover, it's going to be colossal. And all of the respect is going to be lost in a, in a minute. I struggled with that. I would go back home and then I will question myself. Bumi, are you really sure? 
Are you really sure you're good? Are you really sure you're smart? So you do something right. You tell yourself, you know what? This is just luck. <laughs> this is just luck. This is not me. This is just luck. Ah, I'm lucky. You do something wrong. <laughs> this is the real me. I told you, this is who I really am. This is who I am. <laughs> I struggled with that a lot. Imposter syndrome. Many times, it affects different people. Many times, it affects ladies a lot. And that's why many times they go for jobs that are lower than what they should. You know, many times you see men any more than women, right? Many times it's a challenge, but it affects everybody. Asking yourself, second guessing yourself. There were real financial challenges. I went to England in 2015 on the, P on the PTDF scholarship. And at that time, they were paying in Naira. Because of the exchange rate, when we converted it to pounds, it was way less than what I should be earning. But even before we talk about converting Naira to pounds, they didn't pay me for the first six months. Niger factor. I wasn't paid for the first six months. It was difficult. It was a challenging time. God bless our reverend forever. He did all he could do. But it was difficult. It was a trying time. Financially, it was hard. I remember once, there was not enough money to buy Numa a pair of shoes. So I had taken, you know, he had attended a school in Nigeria for a few months before we left. And one of his shoes he had to buy was recommended by the school. They, they asked you to buy school shoes. But apparently it's Nigerian made. And you know, for children, when you buy shoes for children, it is made in such a way that it's not a buckle. It should be Velcro. Because children, two years, can't do a buckle, right? But many things we don't really consider here. You just do a child's shoe with a buckle. It should be Velcro. So they can easily open and close. So because I didn't have the money to buy him a new pair of shoes, I took that shoes along with me. It was good. I just bought it. I just buy them. Ha. Huh. I took it. Now I go to school. Then they can't say, ha, that the shoe is not appropriate. I was embarrassed. Haba. It was difficult financially. And now my most convenient posture of praying is lying completely flat, facing the ground, my forehead on the floor. And I began to adopt that posture of prayer when I went through this financial crisis. I remember that position in my room. I would just slide down straight. That's still my most convenient posture of prayer. And then I would say, God, help me. I've heard of many scholars that PTD have abandoned. Baba, don't put me to shame. What will I do? I was one and a half years into my PhD in Uniben. What if things go wrong? What if they say all of a sudden they won't support me? And then on the WhatsApp group of other scholars, you know, you know that's when you begin to hear different things. This person, after six months, they forget her. After that one, they forget her. Oh God, I would cry. God, don't abandon me. Let it not be said, where is your God? Huh. It was a tough time. But God came through. And what I learned and how I grew in that time was to learn to trust the love of God. Was to learn to trust that God loves me too much to abandon me. I learned that personally. I went through a lot of stress. A lot of stress. You know, being a single carer for your son. First, going into a PhD where you're, you're completely new at it. You don't know much. You need to put in extra work. And then going in as a single carer for your son. And then you're solely responsible for him over there. Going to school, doing his work, all of that. It was so much on me. I remember when I came back in 2016 and everybody was like, Oh, but you're looking so funny. You're taking care of yourself. Abby? <laughs> 
Now it happened. I still remember the comment from Princess. Princess told me, Mommy, I love the way you are looking at me with anger. Wow. What's in Kosa? Stress. <laughs> Nobody say I see chocolate and no chop. I was so stressed. Every morning, wake up in the morning, feed your son. And then, Nima, I didn't have a car. Nima was a big boy. He wouldn't, he, he's too young to walk. Too big for the buggy. But I didn't have an option. I have to drive the buggy. So I still remember my 25 minute walk every day. Some of you, you hear Nima singing that song. I know you will. I know you will. You hear him saying all of Uncle D's song. That, it was in that journey he learned all the lyrics. Be yes, because we would be walking like this. As in, he was, be you know when it's a, a baby, it's too big for the buggy. But you don't have an option. Because he can't walk. And you can't afford the luxury of taxi. Why now? When is the 20 minutes walk? And because of that, because I don't want to take the longer path, I will take the shorter path when there's mud. So I'll be dragging Numa like this. Sometimes I'll be crying. But Numa was happy. He was, I was, he was busy learning all the lyrics of all the rap songs. Every morning, as long as you play that song for him, he's a jolly good fellow. My brother, my sister. It was years after. Now I know, say, people know me. People know, say, I was the trekker of that path. I thought, I'm telling you. You will know that people know, say, you they trek up and down. They know you. They see you pass their house every morning. Ha. As in three different people. One say, yes, I know you. You drive, you pull your soul. He's always crying. I say, hey. The other one, you know, he was passing by. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this, oh, God. They knew Numa. Because I was always dragging him. And Numa would be crying. I be going, say, God. Where will this end? Lord. It was tough. I remember one day, I had just dropped him off at the nursery and I was going to, I want you to appreciate everything. You see, I'm, as you they see this thing, they, they listen to what they tell you now. I've seen that this one you like. Listen, no. Listen, where, where? <laughs> I remember one day, I was going to, I just dropped him off. You know, the journey was just, you know, you drop him off at the nursery. You walk, after doing that walk, going the muddy path, I remember one day, self, because I had worked on the muddy path when I got to the when I got to the lab, somebody told me. He said, Bumi, why are you bringing mud into the I said, leave me alone. I went to sports complex. It was not a lie. The path is near sports complex. <laughs> Praise God, because every morning, not only you the carry come, every morning I'm always bringing mud into the lab. What happened? So, this one now, I'm telling you. So, that the after walking that path, dropping Numa, you know, my heavy bag, you know, who, 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 who say I will be buying food in school? You carry your, your, your food inside your bag with the laptop, everything. Heavy bag. Heavy bag. You start trekking to bus stop. One day I was just walking. And then, ah, and then that's when I know that God helps. God helps. God brings angels to you. God bless the Fadikpes forever. If you have ever heard me say, um, Auntie Ade, Uncle Tolu, Tommy Singh, just be praying for them. They are my angels in Nottingham. God, God answers. So you see all of my story. I'm not just telling you story. I'm showing you God in it. And I'm showing you how he can relate. So how God can deliver you. How he will not let you perish in that thing. He will send help for you. He will send help. That day I was just walking. You know, I didn't know I was haggard. I just saw a car pull, pull, you know, pull up before me. And she just won down. Meanwhile, how did they know? You know, the way Reverend even met them is a wonderful story. You know, God, God bless Reverend forever. Me, I'm very focused now. You know, hello, hello. But Reverend went, one day, Reverend just saw them in the, in the nursery. Say, what's your name? Tolu, Tolu, you're from Nigeria. Yay! Reverend just hugging. That was how the relationship started. So that's how we met. So it's a matter. So thank God for such a something. So that's how, sir. I want to document my story. <laughs> you want to hear story? <laughs> and I took him out to the nursery. This is one of those visits, one of those little visits. So I went there. So guys, I was coming out. I saw him. I saw, I saw him. You know, goes white, white, white. So I saw this that guy, you know, coming in with a young lady. And I, ah. and I said, hey, good morning. He said, good morning. I said, I said my name is Craig. He said, yeah, he said, I'm too, he said, too look. Good to meet you. Too look, Nigeria. You are in Nigeria. 
pas ses mains, tu vas aménager. Il fait, ah, 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 tout le monde, dans mes yeux, à Il dit, il dit, yes, I say, ah, I say, my wife is Yoruba. Me, I'm from Bini. Il dit, my wife is in the country, mais non, c'est, ah, ah. I was, I, just, I, just, I was looking for any car with a black woman inside. And I, I, said, I just met your husband. You are from a different state. I am from a different state. And that was it, man. Hallelujah. So that, that was the beginning of that beautiful relationship, which to now is such a massive, I mean, we've become like family, as in Tommy Sin is, Tommy Sin is literally, you know, my daughter in England and, you know, and all that. So they pulled over and then she went down and she looked at me and she said, Bumi, what is wrong with you? I said, nothing, I'm okay. He said, Bumi, um, you and Numa. Come and spend the night. They come and spend the weekend with us. I say, oh, he say yes. Come and rest. Come and rest with us. I don't understand the meaning. But I say he saw something in my face. He say, come and rest in my. I say, I've never up until then. I've never gone to the house. I'm very content somewhere. I've never gone to house. You see, when you suffer, it didn't show for your face. <laughs> You see, when you are abroad, eh, many times it's not that you have the money. It's that you have the people you can trust. There are, there are many things money can't buy. Sometimes you can have money, but nobody to trust your child with. So that's why God bless them forever. And I call them my angels. So that, that I was going to go. Unfortunately, that was when there was a testimony. When I came that time, do you remember I shared the testimony about chicken pox? And how God cut it off in righteousness. So a day before, I caught chicken pox. And so I couldn't go. And so she told me. She said, Bumi, I can't leave Nima with you. Number one, not even because of the chicken pox. But you need rest, Bumi. You need rest. And she came. I never let Nima stay outside before in my life. I never allow him for sleepovers. I queried. I questioned. God, what is this? I know I desperately need this rest. But I don't know if I'm happy to let my son go. You know, the, 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 the pains of a mother. You want to suffer and keep your child. I called Reverend. He said, let him go. Ah. So that's how. I let him go. I still remember Nima. Mommy, aren't you coming? I said, no. I cried. My first night without Nima. What was I going to do? It was a very emotional. And then I waved them by. And then I went back. And I always write, you know, whenever I'm full of emotions, I just pour out my emotions in books. And I wrote a two-page letter to Nima, which I'm hoping he will read one day when he's grown up. He has never read the letter, but it's in my journal. And I just wrote to him how I miss him and all that. After crying, then I slept off. And then God healed me miraculously of that chicken pox. That was a testimony I gave when I came to 2016 camp meeting. The chicken pox didn't develop to maturity. It was cut short as soon as Reverend prayed over the phone. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was cut short. It dried off. If you remember, I gave the testimony in camp meeting. Hallelujah. So I experienced the stress. But one thing I learned is that God always provides help. I experienced frustration. Put up my picture on frustration. I, I want victory. I said I'm not my, my crying must show. Can you see me crying? You cannot see the crying. I was crying. In this, this one, this particular picture, I was crying. And I put two pictures for you to know that it was not, not be only once. Somebody will ask me, why did you take this picture? Keep quiet. Let me tell you, it, this, this was in 2019, okay? 2019. I was frustrated. Bumi, why were you frustrated? It was a mixture of two things. It was frustrating in the lab. When your PhD depends on the generation of sensible results and it's just not working, what do you do? You are frustrated. So this is what happens to you, okay? So this is my, my, my study bench in my home. This is my place of loneliness. I like this place very well. I don't, I don't do library. This is, this is my library. Okay? So this is where I do everything. So this is where I will be. And then I was crying. And I felt the Spirit of God tell me, take a picture of you. 
you will need this to share one day. 2019. And then that was a selfie. I was crying there. I was frustrated there. This picture is a mixture of frustration and bereavement. I lost my mom in 2019. For a long time, my mom was the reason why I wanted to succeed. My mommy put in everything into me. She invested in me. She believed in me. She put me in the path of, of, of excellence. You know, I know, you know, my mommy, she had a crude way of, you know, cane. Okay? And she didn't believe you should use the eraser. Because she tells you, think before you write. So when you write and you're using eraser, <laughs> hallelujah. I still, have the, I still have the mark here where she beat me. But I love my mother for life. She built in me the resilience, the strength of character that I now have. And so you can imagine all I would look forward to. Oh, mommy, I will soon graduate. 2019, I was going to finish my PhD. And all I had in mind was how God was going to make a way and I'll bring mommy for graduation and everything. And then to hear that mommy died. Why? How do you handle that? So, this was a mixture of both. I was frustrated and I was bereaved. Lost my father in 20, 2006. Lost my mother in 2019. Lost my brother in 20... I've, been a, I've, I've, I've lost close people. You lose people and you want to give up. You lose people and you say, why? I've been there. This picture means a lot. Because I was broken. I was broken. This speaks a lot about frustration and bereavement. But what I learned in this is that God always steps in. And that God takes the place of the person you have lost. If there's anybody here you're going through bereavement, God will step into the place of your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, whosoever it is. And you become strong in the broken places. He reinforces your strength in that place where you've been broken such that you become super strong there. And you begin to question yourself. And then you realize it is God who strengthened me in this place. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. His strength saw me through. God has been faithful. And I've made a number of applications in life. I've got a number of, I'm afraid... <laughs> we can't give you this. I'm sorry. Some of you may know, some of you may not know, but um, I have a, I got a recent, um, can I have next slide, please? I got a recent um, job offer, permanent lectureship, University of North, University Trent, North Nam Trent University. Praise God. Praise the city. You see this now, and you say, wow, Pastor Bumi. Let me tell you about this. Last year, I knew my contract was going to end in June. And I began to ask myself, what am I going to do next? There's a message the Lord has built in me on this. And by the grace of God, I'm going to share it in camp meeting. So it's not going to be very detailed here. This or or more this or go. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, so I knew, you know, I was my contract was ending in June. So what, what was I going to do? What's going to be the next way forward? And Reverend told me, relax. Look at the pattern. Look at the pattern. How God has been bringing you. I'm true to his word. You know, it's been from one to the other. As in literally from one to the other. God has just been so faithful to me. But of course, you know that feeling of agitation when you're not sure. Hmm? Isn't it? You're not sure, but you know, you, you, are, you are very, very concerned, right? So, um, there's a place of God's word, and I hope that by sharing this testimony, what you will take away from this part is that there is a place of a close relationship with God and hearing from God in, your, in the advancement of your career. That is what I would like for you to take away from this part, okay? Okay. 
So, uh, we are not like the world groping in darkness, you know, doing a million random things and anywhere belief is hoping something will work. We are people of prophecy, right? God has told us certain things, right? And then we are, we are looking at what God would do. So, um, I've always loved to teach. I've had a preference for teaching over research. And that's what I've always wanted to do. Right from when I was in, in university, you know, if there's anything you've ever heard me say, is to teach. That's what I've always wanted. So this signifies a dream job for me. It ticks all the boxes, literally. So... I told myself, I have, I have, I have teaching experience, you know, um, a bit, but I need some more UK teaching experience so that I'll be able to have this kind of job because this was the kind of job I wanted. So there was the opportunity to apply for an hourly paid lecturer. No contract at all. No, no contract. Not the contract job, okay? It's anytime there's work, come and work, we pay you, okay? You know that kind of job. They don't owe you anything, do as in, they can call you, they don't have to call you. But that's not it. It's just like hourly paid lecturer. But then the experience is there. So when the offer came in January, I applied for that. And then interview was went well. And then I got the job. And I was happy. And then we, I started. The first time, they said, we do industrial. I do industrial. Two weeks later, two weeks later, I got an email. Could you please send me details of your certificate of sponsorship? There's something. I said, what's in glass? I sent him, and then I got that letter. Who that letter? Made the same. Who the letter? Correct. Can you read? Siam, I said, may you see? This, this, this I, I'm going to be showing you confidential letter. So if you would oblige me, kindly do not take photos. Okay? They are personal, if you don't mind. Hi, born me. That's what they call me. Looking at your certificate of sponsorship, the CEO, blah, 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 which is for research, and as such, this does not cover teaching. So, unfortunately, we will have to withdraw the offer we sent. Can you imagine? You have told me, you have given me a job. It don't reach my hand. I started induction. I started calculating. You know, when, when you are doing the induction, that day was for over five hours. I don't calculate how much they will pay me. You understand? They're not telling me that, unfortunately, because my certificate of sponsorship covers me only for research, it doesn't cover me for teaching. So they can, because this was in a different university, can I make it clear? So that's why, if it were in the same university, it wouldn't have mattered, okay? So just make it clear, because it was in a different university. So they rejected. So can you imagine how broken I was? I said, I asked, which kind of near success syndrome is this one? How can some, something don't reach your hand finish? They have given you a job. Two weeks later, they take it away from you. Is it not better that they didn't give you at all? Yeah. Which kind of bad luck be that one? Yeah. God, it didn't pay me. It paid me because this job represented the experience I needed. It represented the bridge that I, that I needed. I thought to myself, if I got this job, I would get the experience. And this was the experience I was lacking. I thought I had a good CV, but this experience. And then I lost it. Out of no reason due to mine, of mine. It was so painful. I was broken. I dealt with a lot. I've, you know, been through a lot. And then Reverend told me again, relax. I know how this works. <laughs> you understand? He said, don't worry. Everything will be okay. I said, fine. But you know when in your mind you want to test yourself? I told myself, I said, Bumi, you know bad like that. Oh. Put application. Don't tell. I will not tell you. Sorry. I just <laughs> I say, hey, let me just let me just try my luck. Let me see. They may not even invite me for interview. Said, let me just try. I put so for the interview. So I can't show what the letters now because um, apparently my contract is over with the university. So my email, I've lost access to my email. Okay. So when I was trying to fish out all the emails, I didn't have access to them again. But there were some I transferred into my Gmail, and those are the ones. But can I let you know that I had more rejection letters, and I'm going to show you. Okay. There were more. So some of them were applying, and they don't even call you back. They don't get back to you. Some of them they tell you you are not my spec. You know which kind? Of, which kind? Of something is that one. I hate. I hate it. You don't apply, they say, they say, I'm sorry. Which kind I'm sorry? You are not sorry. So, <laughs> so you see, I'm, so I now applied again. So there was now another job. So I now just, applied. that, that one that was in my backyard. You know, just the next uh, lab. I just apply for that one. I just say, again, this one, let me just do it. I'm not sure Reverend with mine because it's in the same university. Yeah. yeah. So after I apply, when they now called me for interview, and I told them, they, yeah, just, they just called me for interview. I see the interview jump on my head, say, I know, do something. So, <laughs> so 
I said, they just come in for interview. He said, okay, go. The day I was going, I said, pray for me, pray for me. But you still pray for me. Why do you pray for me now? Why you not say, I'm not supposed to do it? He still, he still pray for me. I went for the interview. The interview, eh? hey, as soon as I got there, it's like I said, the man just fell in love with me. Hey, no, not that kind of fall in love. <laughs> I got there. I don't know. It's the favor of God rule on my head. I just sat. I just sat down. The man just said, "Okay, how are you?" He, hey, can I tell you what he do? He gave me the question of the interview. He said, "Go through the questions, and then I will take you to the to the office." I look. I say, "Is this test?" He said, "No, no, no. Go through. Go through." He gave me, and then he left his office. I see. Hey, I was going to the. Hey, I go through it. I just I say, ha, hallelujah. He now took me to the interview. When we went for interview, I finished the interview. The man looked at me. He said, you are my candidate. I'll get back to you tonight. Brother, put the next slide. <laughs> I said, put the next one. Eh? What's in me this? <laughs> I did not hear him next day. It was Tuesday I went for the interview on Thursday. I was about to, I still remember there. I was just about to enter Lidio. I just heard, pa, pa, pa. I said, this is the test. <laughs> I brought it out. I said, ah. See what I saw. He said, we have now completed the selection process for you, and I regret to, you, you don't regret anything. I regret to inform you that your application has not been successful on this occasion. You want to take, thank me for the, for, for the interest I've shown. And the... I was shocked. What went wrong? What went wrong? The man told me, what was that, sir? Uh-huh. They are thanking me for the time I invested in. Don't mind them. Uh-huh. What went wrong? As in the man literally told me, you are my candidate, I'll get back to you tonight. You see, when God is keeping the good away from you, and you are losing things in, in ways that seem unfair, you feel like I'm better than this, I ought to have gotten this, and you didn't get it. This is a typical example. I was shocked. Why? What is in my head? Then I decided to settle down. God told me. Your job will be waiting for you. He told me the way I would know is my job. He said, someone is going to tell you, Bumi, have you seen this thing? Apply for it. In April, I registered for job recruitment uh, emails. And then I got, I saw this, the job, which I've now been offered. Application. It looked really good. Too perfect. And I was like, this job ticks all the boxes. Except for the way I heard about it. God told me somebody was going to tell you, this is a job, apply for it. And so I left it and I put it in mind. And then two days later, you see how everything is working together. The lady I met who did the induction for me when I was doing hourly paid for that two weeks, messaged me and said, Bumi, have you seen this email? I think it fits your CV, apply for it. When she said that to me, I said, this is it. It ticks all the boxes. So now, I want to show you, you know when you now feel like this is it. When you know that this is what God wants you to have, right? God has shown you this is the path. You know clearly that this is what you should be doing. You know clearly that this is where you should be going. You know clearly that this is what God wants you to get. You know clearly that this is what God wants you to pursue. So when you find yourself in that situation, what do you do? You now put in all the work. Okay? You put in the work. Now, so when God told me that, with that confidence that I know that this is my job, I began to prepare for the application. I prepared the application, which was going to be submitted. And I think that, that took about three weeks. I took three weeks to prepare my application because I was trying to be very thorough. Okay? 
So you had to write number of essays, research essay, teaching essay, CV, cover letter, a lot, a lot, okay? Some people may just brush over it. But because I knew that this was my dream job, I wasn't going to let it slip through my fingers. Once you have that confidence, don't let nothing take it away from you. You put all you have into it and you take it and deliver it to yourself. So what dream has God given to you? You put in all that you need to put in into it because you have the confidence that this is for you. Not because you want to see if it will work or if it will not work, but because you know that this is what God has given to you. So you are working from a confidence of God has given me this thing and then I work for it. Do you understand me? And then I started the application. And then after that, I sent it to people to, to, to look at the application. You know, is this good enough? You know, is this good enough? And then I submitted it, praise God. And then came the waiting time. We wait to finally he came invited to interview <laughs> praise god i was very excited to know that and then again i put in the work praise god put in the work preparing for the interview preparing my slides you know they told me you're going to have to tell us how you can develop your scholarship okay so when they tell you that don't just go and say okay how i'm going to develop my scholarship you be creative so i made beautiful slides you know slides that tell you my five-year plan using a gun chart you know, potential and, um, and, and, and projects that I could do, you know, things that, you know, you know, when you know you want something, you do it like you want it. You don't do it haphazardly. You put your heart into it. You throw yourself into it. You pray as much as you have to pray. You put all of the efforts into it. Praise God. Because you know that this is what God has given to you and you are going for it. Hallelujah. And so we're putting all the work strengthened by but i could see the grace of god really because even while i was preparing for the for the for the for the application i don't think i've ever enjoyed the whole process of writing essays as much as i enjoyed this process like i would literally be waiting to for newman to go to bed and i can't wait to get back to my essays that was god in me enabling me to want to do this he had given this to me and then he was giving me the desire to want to like i was literally i couldn't wait as soon as he went to bed, I will open my laptop. I will be doing, 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 you know. Ah, higher. Do you, how badly do you want it? I'm asking you, how badly do you want it? How much work are you putting into it? You need to put work into this thing. God has strengthened you. God has enabled you. Do all you can. And then I started reading, you know. You know how you know how the interview is going to go, how the interview is going to go. My brother, my sister. I'm not exaggerating, but... I think I swallowed your website. Whew. All the papers they published in that department, I will look at it. I swallowed the website. And then the interview was, you know, when I got there, it was, it was almost, you know, when they want to put you, first of all, I put my, my, my presentation in a very small um, flash drive. And then when I got there, you know, the man just came straight to me. Yes, can you come? And then that flash drive got me saying, you know, woman bag, when something lost inside woman bag. <laughs> So that's how I was not looking for the flash drive. It not look as if I'm not standing there. They wait for me. I look for it. I gave him, this is my presentation. He took it inside. Ah, as soon as I entered the, this thing, it be like, say all those people, they're just serious. So whether they never chop. <laughs> they just look at me sternly. He just look at me sternly. It's going to be 10 minutes. If it's anything more than 10 minutes, I'm going to cut you short, okay? Things like that are supposed to put you off. But when you are ready in your spirit, <laughs> when you are ready in your, I came ready. I'm unstoppable. You can't break, I'm unbreakable. You can't break me with racism. Who you be? The best in life is for me. You are not better than me because you be your Yimbo. You are not better than me because of the kind of family you come from. I know who I am. I'm made for more. I said the best things in life are for you. Don't settle for less. Read my lips. Enough is enough. The people who are having it don't have two heads. You need to believe in yourself because God has said it. And we know why you are doing this. That's the honorable thing there. We are not doing it just because we want our name to be now our name nine 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 go they sing for, 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 for village. It's more than that. We are doing this for kingdom. Because you know that with every step you take up is a new platform for ministry. You are doing it because you need a voice. You are doing it because you are going to go into certain places and the only reason why you are going to listen to you is because of where you are placed in society. So that's why we do it. No, 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 no. I'm not backing.
looking down. You tell me that when you're when you're outside the country, you can only do minimal jobs. Never. If I want it, I get it. If you want it, you get it. It doesn't matter how many times they told you no. It doesn't matter how many times they told you your body is not good for the job. It doesn't matter what they've told you. Listen to me. If you want it, you get it. You go for it. You know the only thing limiting you? You. The only thing limiting you is your mindset. Who told you? Who's lying to you? Who told you you can be it? There is greatness inside of you. You were not made for an ordinary life. Don't settle for less. When we say my life is beautiful, it's not a cliche. When you say my life is a tapestry of harmony and beauty, it's not a cliche. Do you want to break me? I came ready. I've been preparing for, for this for you. You don't want to break me by, by shaking me. You know, sometimes some people just shake you and your years of preparation just seem like it just fizzles out. Don't let that happen to you. Be so tough in your heart. It doesn't matter what anybody says to you. I know why I came here. And I'm getting it in the name of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm trying to communicate to you? We belong to a community where we don't take no for an answer. How badly do you want it, I asked you. You want it? You go for it. They've told you no 10 times, go for it. 20 times, go for it. 100 times, go for it. How can you beat a man who just wouldn't give up? You don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> Finish the interview. They ask me a question. I answer them. One way they don't even ask me. You know, come, 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 come. When you are going for interview, don't just say only the things they ask you. Anything you know about the company, find a way to bring it in. And then they ask me, and I say, yeah, I, you know, I needed to sign. Because you don't know what the other people have done. You have to sign. And I say, yeah. I noticed you published that paper and I really liked the outcome. When I analyzed the paper for them, one of them just shake it. That's so. Go the extra mile. Go the extra mile. Don't be lazy. Get up. And that's ministry. Thank you, sir. That's ministry. You need to see ministry in everything that you do. Yes. When you're succeeding, it's ministry. It's ministry. It's ministry. Yes. Some people have that dilemma. Oh, I just want to do this. I just want to go out. Whether you are walking out or you are walking in church, it's ministry. Yes. Hallelujah. So those who are walking out, support those who are walking in. And those who are walking in, don't look at those who are walking out as if they are less spiritual. That's the way it is. Yes. So wherever the Lord has placed you, stay in it. Grow in it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Ah! I see a bundle of people who are going somewhere to happen. Listen to me. You are not too young to get it. You are not too old to get it. Don't give up. Don't rule yourself out. A dear friend told me, if you don't apply, you don't give yourself a chance. If you don't put yourself forward, you don't give yourself a chance. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You don't get up from the bed. You don't tell anybody what you can do. Nobody knows what you can do. So you are not even giving yourself a chance if you don't come out. Nobody is going to listen to me. God has sent me. You go and talk. That way you are giving yourself a chance. And let's see if God will not make good his word. So do your part and let the outcome be for God to do. So don't do nothing because you can't do everything. By all means, do something. Get up. Do something. Okay? Tell your neighbor, do something. You receive grace to do something. And to do the right thing. To be effective and to be efficient. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, hey, sir. The Lord now did it for us. For my contract finished in June, and then the first of July, I was just on my laptop. <laughs> Doctor, if I say you should give me something, my eye, my eye don't they pay me for laptop? 
Doctor F.A., do something about that. So I was, I was, you know, this is my life. I just received the email like that. I better put that in there. Put it in. Correct. <laughs> Dear Bumi, this one is the right pronunciation of my name now. <laughs> yes. Dear Bumi, I am very pleased to inform you that we would like to offer you the post of lecturer in biosciences, teaching and scholarship pathway. Please, can you let me know if in principle you would like to accept? And then we can discuss salary terms before we confirm everything. <laughs> It's a matter. Please be seated. Somebody says it's a matter. So, I said I was not happy. When I got in me, I was shocked. I was not crying. I was not crying. And I come out, man. And I said, see what you are saying. So, my husband was not happy. And I told him, don't say I told you. Because he told me, and I said, don't, don't tell me, did I not tell you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Your life is beautiful. How can you stop a man who just won't quit? I'm challenging you tonight. Don't stop. Don't quit. You know the many misses you have, you're going to learn from them. You're going to maximize your multiple misses. Where you have failed. John Maxwell says, if you fall, pick something. If you go for an interview and you weren't given the job, be brave enough. I know that's the last thing you want to do. Try to message them if you can and say thank you for the opportunity may I please know what I didn't do well that's not what's on your mind to do because you're hurting and you're upset can you take that from me can you do that can you look in the eyes of your failure and see how you can deliberately learn from your mistakes because you know it's a part of success your misses success is an iceberg Success is not the tip of an iceberg. That's what people see. Success is an iceberg. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So something goes wrong. Can you ask? You didn't get something. Can you ask for feedback? How, how tough are you when people criticize you? How much can you handle criticism? Can you use it for your good? Or do you just get broken? Reverend taught us about how people react when they have been rebuked. Either you just stuffing up yourself and behave as if it wasn't there, or I don't care, or you just break under it, right? So do you break under criticism, or do you take it? Do you chew it like bread? Do you chew it like bone? Get all the calcium in it and get your teeth strengthened for the bigger things that are going to come. How do you react when people say you're not beautiful? How do you react? When people say that you're not good enough for the job. How do you react when people say you're not good enough your body? Like Toby that you don't have the athlete body. What do you do? Do you give up? Or do you go back to see how can I get better? Looking into your failure is not the easiest thing to do. But you must look into it. Because there are valuable lessons there that you can learn. I was able to be more proactive in my second interview because in my first interview, I realized that, in the previous interview, I realized that I spoke too much about my work and I did not pay attention to their work. And even though I was qualified, I didn't get that. I learned in my second interview, speak less about yourself and speak more about what they want and how what you have can give them what they want. But I learned it from an interview that I failed. (coughs) 
if I didn't look closely at that, I may have made the same mistake. Perpetuating failure and blaming my village people. The next wisdom is in looking at your failures, looking at your misses, looking at the times you went off key, or I don't know how to analyze it for music people. Whatever it is, the book that didn't sell, what happened? Was it your title? Was it not attractive enough? Did you not use a good publisher? What went wrong? It's not easy, but you need to look at it. Look at it. Be honest with yourself. Okay? An unexamined life is not worth living, right? Look at it. Look at it critically. Sometimes we win. Sometimes we learn. Sometimes the goal is going on. Or we are growing. Something is happening. So don't exalt the goal just getting better. Moving to a permanent site. And then you devalue your growth process. You are getting better. Tell yourself I'm getting better. Tell yourself I'm getting better. Embrace your process. You're in good company. See, I'm in good company. I'll conclude with emphasizing on speaking into reality the things that you want. You need to be a talking Christian. Don't let anybody steal your voice. Don't let anybody steal your sound. You need to be able to talk to yourself. You need to be able to talk to yourself. Sometimes I talk to myself so often that sometimes I catch myself laughing. Sometimes my mom will say, what's wrong with you? It has gotten to that stage. I talk to myself. I tell myself what I want. You know, my life is beautiful. I'm getting this. I'm unstoppable. Hallelujah. Pin good pictures in front of you. I remember, I remember, you know, I'm just teaching, you know, from my experience just with this one. So, you know, I remember when I was, you know, looking, I, I think I only saw the possibility of getting a positive result for this interview. So all of my rejection letters, I say I'm not reading them again. I started looking at any time I've ever got anything positive. So I looked, I opened all those emails and I said, hey, I'm pleased to, I'm pleased to let you know. I would like to let you know. So all of these are the things I put in front of me. So you need good pictures in front of you. You know, you've been here before. God has done this. God has, God has done you well. Don't live in isolation of the goodness of God upon your life. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Don't have hardness of heart. Ah, I'm entering my camp meeting message. Make I stop here. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. We're going to explore trusting God, hardness of heart, all these things. It's going to be hot in camp meeting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have you gotten something from today's meeting? Are you sure? Your life is beautiful. As you say it, now I want you to say it with me. Say, my life is beautiful. Say, my life is a tapestry of beauty and harmony. Say, the best things in life are for me. Say, I'm purpose-driven. Say, I'm unbreakable. Say, I'm unstoppable. Say, I'm going somewhere to happen big. Say, I live my days in pleasure and fulfillment. Have you felt my heart tonight? Have I communicated to you tonight? You are not a failure. You are not a failure. Let God be true and every man a liar. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate this dear, dear, precious woman of God. This bundle of success. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not preaching. Why did they put my Bible here? Don't tell me, I will start taking this episode. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Ooh, Jesus. 
<laughs> oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Oh, wow. So, while I was sitting there, while Reverend Bumi was teaching, I saw uh, uh, just a flash, and I got an instruction um, for some ladies here, and I just want to say it quickly. It's not for every lady. It's for a few ladies. This is what I saw in that flash. I saw ladies who have been told and they know personally because of certain uh, shortcomings in their personal lives um, they've been told you've been told you're going to have problems in marriage listen because of certain attitudes that you have now, like I said, this is not for every sister. This is just for a few sisters. There was a bit. I just saw that. And um, these are things that you know and, and you have come to admit. With these attitudes, I'm going to have challenges in marriage if I don't change it and I don't deal with it. But somehow it has proven a bit difficult to deal with. But then just still in the picture on the other side, I saw the strengths that you possess in your personality and character. And I saw that strength or those strengths rather. I saw those strengths as um Occasions for great success in life. Great successes. And the Lord said to me, tell them to forget about their shortcomings in marriage or the shortcomings, the shortcomings that will give them problems in marriage and focus on their strengths to succeed in life. Now, for now, you know me. I am not one to tell a lady. We, we, my wife and I have a ministry in marriage. So, what I would never play down on the issue of, you know, um, character and all of that. Both for the lady and for the guy. And that's why this is so special. Because... What I saw in that vision was I saw these ladies toning down the strengths of their personality to excel because they, uh, in order to tone down on the bad, on the shortcomings, the bad attitudes, so that they can be married. I saw them in a bit to walk on this part of themselves so they can be married, I saw them toning down, toning down their strengths to ex excel in life, to succeed in life. And the Lord said to tell you, do not tone down your strength to succeed in life. And the Lord said to tell you, go ahead and succeed. Now, Success will be so beautiful for you. You will love the idea of succeeding in everything, including marriage. Then you will begin to deal with those attitudes from the strengths. This is not for every lady. It is for those ladies who fit into this category. And you will know it. Because as I'm giving these words, the Lord is zooming it into your spirit. He's zooming in on your spirit. And he's highlighting these things in those areas of your heart. And you know it. Hallelujah. So I heard the Lord say, tell them 
So go ahead and succeed. Go ahead and succeed. Push to succeed in life. Go ahead and be all that you can be. Amen. Don't tone down your strengths so that you can get married to a man. Succeed at what I have called you to do, says God. Then you will love the idea of success in every other area and you will deal with those areas. So the Lord has not said, don't do anything about those areas. He's, he's given you the strategy to deal with that. And the strategy is to succeed in life. Hallelujah. The strategy is to succeed. I saw these ladies with very unique qualities, very strong um, aspects to their personalities that will trigger successes quickly. But the preoccupation with not being good enough for marriage because of certain bad attitudes is now rubbing off on their strengths to succeed in life, in the things that they are gifted in and they are good at. And the Lord is saying, focus on those areas you are good at. You will so succeed by his grace. You will love the idea of success. And you will want to succeed in every area, including marriage. You would have built something so strong. And you will believe you can build other things. And you will want to have a complete result. And the Lord will show you your moments and your times. Your moments and your timings. So have no fear. But get at it. Get at the business of succeeding. And succeed. I know this is the word of the Lord. I saw it. And I know it. Like I know my name. This is the word of the Lord. Because this is not the usual counsel you will get. So it's gone. gone did you, uh, you know, and then all the emphasis on uh, how can you submit to a man? Uh, da, 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 da. It's important to submit to a man if you're married. Amen. Praise God. But it is not as important to be married as it is to succeed at what God has called you to do. It is not as important to be married as it is to succeed at what God has called you to do. That is for guys and ladies alike. So go about and succeed. If not, you will find yourself only trying to succeed at being, at staying married. And you will never amount to all that God has ordained for you to be. It will be strange for anyone to think that I have a problem with marriage. I am happily married. To the greatest woman in the world, And then somebody says, uh, hey, that's how men always talk when they want to just hype their wife. It is the so many world. You know that there are other people you have seen that are greater than your wife. Um, 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 so I should say, I have seen somebody that's greater than my wife. Really, I should say it. <laughs> no, like, until we turn on. Praise God. I'm married to the greatest woman in the world. (laughs) 
Praise God. So there's no way anyone can say that this word came out of any. Praise God. I'd love you to be married. I have lots of teachings on marriage. And we are raising a new breed of lovers. <laughs> Hallelujah. And even married couples who sit under our tutelage are testifying of great changes in their marriages. We know that this thing works. We've been intent testing these things. Haya, it works. Glory to God. So please, and you will know you fall into that category because the Lord will highlight it in your spirit. Take that. Amen. There are no words to describe what we heard here tonight. It's not just what we heard. It is an experience. We've had an experience here tonight. You know, every time my wife is teaching, I don't... Uh, I'm always excited when, she's, when she teaches. My wife can tell you, I want her to teach a lot more than she does teach. Praise God. Um, but she doesn't have the calling to teach the way I do. She doesn't have the calling to... Um, she, she's called in the ministry, but it's, it's not in my capacity. Praise God. So she she loves to take her time and um, and prepare. But I always knew that there was a ministry that was coming out of her that was tied to her successes and her victories. And that's why I always tell her to say her testimonies well. And I have threatened her that anytime she's sharing, I should just not say to her, I will come off stage. I will take the microphone from her. It doesn't matter what she's sharing it. Even if it's even front of president or professor, I will come out, I will share that part. I will go back to my seat. And she will continue her ministry. But every time she shares, as much as I'm excited, I jump about, I love to hear her teach. Uh, and I love the inspiration that comes from her. You know, I sit down and I look at her and I see a different woman. I don't commonize this woman. I don't. I don't in any way. In any way, form or shape, I don't. I don't. I, I am blessed to be married to her. Very blessed. Very blessed. Hallelujah. More than that, I see what God is doing with this union having somebody who, you, if you hear me teach about, don't go to school, follow your talent, you would think I don't like school. And I think that's why the Lord ensured that I had to get that degree and put it there so that if they want to talk, I show them degree. And then to be married to somebody who's so passionate. I mean, you know, that's one of the problems they had. They didn't think we were compatible. They say they are intellectually incompatible. I say all those one are grammar. I like the woman. Nothing where you want to talk. She like me too. Uh, so she will do her own, I will do my own. And both of us will like ourselves and be going. And it's powerful. And we both know we are sent to inspire a generation. We are sent to talk to a generation. And it has started sounding. Nobody in this place or that has heard these words tonight will be small in life. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere the fire for success has gone down. I release grace tonight to push. I release grace for staying power. 
elo satono bahageda abre dastono hositai into ketando starad de lo hosta sikai da lo shapai itanamba lo hosta sai i declare in the name of jesus every gift and talent on the inside will find full expression i declare in the name of jesus every vision in your spirit every ability every calling in the name of jesus everything you can be everything you are anointed to be the power of god is released here tonight i release grace in the name of jesus i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser now in your mind in your heart I silence the voice of the accuser. Everywhere you seemed to have failed, they are part of the building blocks for your life. And they are turning out for your good. You are maximizing your misses. What the enemy meant for evil, the Lord turns it around for good. I release upon you grace for strategic miracles. Elo zenga bahage, luze bahatia, reba lahake no ste sulu bahai. Everywhere your voice has been undermined, in the name of Jesus, I give you release. I give you release. I give you release. You will speak, and your voice will be loud. You will speak and your voice will resound. Every influence that wants to make you achieve small, I break it. Your ears are open. Hear the word of the Lord. Go and succeed. You are part of an unstoppable generation. The limits are taken off of you now. The limits are taken off of you. The limits are taken off of you. The chains are broken. The chains are broken. The limitations are removed. The limitations are removed. I release supernatural help. Go and become all that you can be. I release grace for strength. Stay in power. You will stay through your process in the name of Jesus. You will stay through your process in the name of Jesus. Your soul will be still and see the salvation of the Lord. I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of condemnation. I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of condemnation. Rise into your fullness. Rise into your fullness. Rise into your fullness. <laughs> I'm hearing the word again for those ladies. Major on the area of your strengths and begin to pursue destiny. There's so much that God wants to do with you. Stop limiting yourself. Run along 
your time is now the heavens are set for your upliftment every limitation breaks tonight oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus Jesus. Listen to me, church. Listen. Listen to me. This generation, listen to me. A generation is not known by age. A generation is known by purpose. One generation died in the wilderness, not because of age, but because of rebellion. There are children 20 and below came into the purposes that the last generation before them failed at. When they came out of the wilderness, there were two men from that former generation that came out with them. Joshua and Caleb. Caleb was 84. generation is by age. What was Caleb doing there? What was Joshua doing there? It is that for 40 years God kept purpose growing in the heart of Caleb. Don't forget Caleb and Joshua were, were two of the 12 spies. Or of the 10 there were 12 of them, 12 spies. At that time, Caleb and Joshua were ready to go and take the promised land. They said, let us go at once. But for 40 years, those two men were delayed. After 40 years, Caleb came out and said, the way I used to go in and out of battle in my 40s. I am still able to go in and out of battle in my 80s. It has nothing to do with age. It has all to do with assignment. I see a generation with an assignment. And you are part of that generation. When it seems as if your life is ending, it's about to start. When people say it is it, now, everything should be rounding up. Is then your life is about to start. Now, let me tell you, because this is one of the fights that I have had to fight in my life. Preparation time is not wasted time. And it took a lot for me to understand that God was preparing us differently. Because even many of the things that I grew up doing, I had no flair for to continue. And I said to the Lord, Lord, this is the way I know to do ministry. This is the way I've done it. And the Lord said, I have a different assignment for you. And it was, it was looking strange. And, 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 and it, it felt strange. It felt strange. It looked strange. It felt strange. Especially when I saw my, my you know, those who we grew up together, I see them doing ministry the way it's always been done. And the Lord said, I'm sending you an army to raise for me. I'm sending you a people that you will raise into an army for me. And I found out that the warfare is different this time and so the strategy is different. But it took time, it took years to understand. And last year, the Lord made me comfortable with my assignment and with my process. And my, pers my perspective of you changed. When I tell you I am sent to a generation, I know what I'm talking about. 
the things that have never been known to be ministry will be seen to be ministry. So get yourselves ready because the Lord is anointing people here for things that are strange, that are different, things that nobody will call ministry on a regular day. You will see how God begins to release you into these things and do ministry through you. I'm telling you things that I have not been able to communicate even to elders in the faith. But things that God has put in my spirit and I know it like I know my name. And every time I see you guys, I see, I see what God is doing. 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 You see, in all of this, you all the teachings you heard tonight, you felt God while Reverend Bumi was teaching. You felt God and you could feel in your spirit, this is ministry. Yet you didn't hear her say anything about church. You didn't hear her say anything about revival. You didn't hear her say anything about, oh, all that, all that. Huh? That the platform that God is building you with will be the platform to do the work he has committed into your hands. What I am saying to you is that as much as a pastor sets up a church, organizes crusades souls are one he has a tv ministry does whatever that is how your law practice will be saving souls your artistry will be saving souls your architecture your music your painting your your famine the power of god is here the power of god is here that is how all of these things you will be oh boy apostles in the marketplace <laughs> the power of god is here i'm telling you what has never been seen to be ministry before you will see it to be ministry shortly and that is the reason why god is releasing grace for you to excel <laughs> We will see a people so driven to do the work of the Lord in the most unconventional ways. What do you want? Is it not that souls will be won? Is it not that lives will be impacted? Is it not that Christ will be made known? Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. The anointing is resting upon people. And the lesser pataya atta the akataya. You didn't think it was ministry. But you will see yourself do ministry. I know you are making shirts and selling. It doesn't look like ministry. Get ready. Get ready. I know all you see. Every time you think of yourself, all you see yourself is on the computer. Every time you see yourself, all you see yourself doing is computer. It doesn't look like ministry until the breath of God comes upon it then you will see how that thing is a tool it is that God said go ye into the world he told us where to go he said go ye into all the world he told us what to do he said preach the gospel he told us who to preach to he said to every creature one thing he didn't tell us is the how. How do we go into all the world? Some of you are going in with your law practice. Going in with your arts. Going in with academics. Some of you are going into all the world through business. Some of you are going into all the world through speaking. I, I didn't say preaching the gospel. I said speaking. 
public speaking. That's how you will enter into all the world. <laughs> Some of you, it's financial intelligence that's taking you into the world. Financial intelligence. Help them or the power of God is here. As I'm speaking, these words are dropping on people. Some of you, it's financial intelligence. God has given you the wisdom on how to multiply money. Uh, some of you, it's your creative designs. You just like fabrics. You can do anything with clothes, with fabrics. It doesn't look like ministry, but the breath of God is resting upon it now. Oh, you think it's just singing? Oh, you think it's just music? You think it's just, you think it's just music? No. Wait until you create craft with music. Craft. 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 It will be like people are literally touching it. What you will do with music. Oh, you thought we were the one in ministry. No, 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 no. You thought we were the ones in ministry. Uh, you are the ones in ministry. We are the ones sent to equip you for ministry. It is us he was talking about when he said he gave some, some to be apostles, prophets. Ephesians 4, 11. Evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of you, the saints, to do the work of ministry. We don't tone down on the revelation of Christ in our teachings. Whoo, hallelujah. Christ is formed in you. The mind of Christ sits in you. And then you are going out with your craft, with your expertise, with your victories, with your successes. It is how you keep how you keep backing those awards that will be the ministry. It is how you keep winning on every front. It is how you keep acing those results. Those are the platforms that God will use. Ah, I see a people on fire. Hey, I saw it in that vision God showed me a few months ago. He said they will ask you, what did your people eat? I saw it. I saw it in that vision. What did you feed them with? What did you feed them with? What did, what did they eat? For years you have been, you have been, you have been prepared. God has been preparing you for a time that was not yet. We are different. We are different. We are different. I said we are different. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Leave those hands and begin to give him praise tonight. Begin to give him praise tonight. Leave those hands and thank you. Leave those hands and thank you. Hey, I hear the nations have been given to you. I hear it in my spirit right now. The nations have been given to you. The nations have been given to you. The nations have been given to you. The nations have been committed to you. The nations have been committed into your hands. Hey, this is a movement. Ah, this is a movement. This is a move of God. Woo, yeah, Dabaha. This is the greatest move of God ever known to the world yet. No one is taking your voice from you. This is church without walls. We are invading the nations with our gifts. There is absolutely no stopping you. The nations have been given to your hands. Oh, I know it like I know my name. Hey, Abahaya Kato Zebrahata. Hey, where are those who are questioning whether it will happen? I stand here tonight as God's mouthpiece and I say to you with audacity, it will come to pass. For those of you that, that 
feel lost. You don't know where you are. You don't know what you're doing. Everybody shout out. God is permitting vision into your, into your spirit. You will know why you came. Some of you came because you were invited. Some of you came because somebody told you. Somebody, some of you came for whatever reason. Oh, they, they, you know, there are happy people there. Oh, there's a way the pastor dresses. Just come and see him. But now you have come in here. Whatever it was that brought you in the first place, it doesn't matter. You have met with destiny. And I tell you, many of you in this place, now you're going to begin to fight, begin, you're going to begin to find out why. The why, the why, 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 why. You're going to begin to find it out. Nothing can undermine you. Are you following what I'm saying tonight? And let me tell you this. Listen. Let me tell you this. Everything you hear in this place can be imparted. Did you hear what I said? Everything you hear can be imparted. Uh, last week we were we were out in a function, my wife and I, and um, a dear minister's wife, a, a bishop's wife. You know, we 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 saw her. we saw them, so we went to say hello, and and the wife grabbed us. She held my wife. What year was it that she brought her daughter to you? She said, in two thousand and I can't remember what date she gave. It's been a while. Before she even entered university, I think she was still in secondary school or so. She brought her, she sent her daughter to my wife. Oh no, we went to their house to visit. She told her daughter, she said, go and meet this woman. Let her lay hands on you for first class. My wife laid hands on her and spoke and blessed her. She told us last week, she said, my daughter just graduated and it was a first class. She said, I knew it ever since that day you placed your hands on her. Something changed and I knew she would do it. She would get it. Everything can be imparted. Everything. Hey, we are not like those who struggle in the flesh. Yes, you can make it in the flesh. You can make it by hard work and reading and we have nothing against hard work. But when you do it by the spirit, first class is first class. And we have many such testimonies. And they are multiplying. But that is just for those in the academics. What of those who are called into government and we get positions without sweat? Thank you, Lord Jesus. One of our young men here in church shared with me about two, three weeks ago how that he, you know, he was having issues in school with this result. He had not, you know, so they had not um, processed it or whatever. So he wasn't out yet. So he came back to Benin and, you know, but he had heard me minister. I went, I did a program in his school, in AAU. And so that was last year or so. And so he, he so he came, when he came, got back to Benin, he decided to come on fellowship with us in church and he's been with us since the beginning of the year since January he shared a testimony with me the same week I gave a word and I said that you're going to get a call some of you are going to get calls all right for a job and it's going to come this week yeah um he too got a call that same week he got a call from the government house that the governor needs an SSA senior special advisor to the governor on some affairs of the and the guy said well i don't have a result my result is not out yet i'm not even going to serve nothing 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 they say we don't care we want you to get it we want you to handle it are you interested or not he said i'm interested following the went to government office, he was handed over the letter. Then the following week, his, the, the, the issues that were with his results were resolved. And the result came out. He came and showed it to me, made it to one. 
one of those who have special creative abilities special special you i mean you have special abilities get ready get ready we will blow this world oh boy oh boy oh boy they will hear us they will hear us they will hear us into the world. Listen, God takes time to build a strong man. I have known this from my younger days when people were living Benin those years, you know, and I have no problem if God told you to leave, but if you left because of frustration, wherever you are, come back. But I always said to them, you guys go. Before you come back, we'll fix the city. And we make it the envy of this nation and the envy of nations. And then that's where these things started coming out. Been into the world. We said we will be here and they will meet us. And the world is already manifesting. They're already manifesting. The city is taken. Ah, listen, for those of you that are just coming and you don't know, listen. We are the city takers. We are the city takers. When we say the city is taken, we say it with meaning. We say it with conviction. The city is taken. Hey, we have we've been through all the criticisms. At some point, this high mocking us. How them city takers? And we understood that we had said it long enough and now the city is speaking back to us. Take your place well. Because you are relevant in the scheme of things. Nobody here is indispensable. Nobody here is dispensable. We don't need this one. No, no, no. Everybody has value. Join this Train. Hallelujah. Listen, how you will know, one of the ways you know what God wants to do in your life is the kind of pastor he put over you. <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen me? Look, have you ever seen me looking discouraged on this stage? Or anywhere in your life? You just look at me and say, ah, Pastor, you don't look at me. Look, I, I try to curtail the fire inside here. Uh, the vision in my spirit. And they, they, they say, there's so much I haven't even said to you. Because I have to be sure you are able to take it before I drop it. Uh, the one you're able to take is what I have dropped. No, and you will, I will still have to drop them, so don't worry, don't worry. Because you are the ones that will make it happen. You are the ones that will make it happen. Even our children, even the children in this ministry, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Nobody is small. Hallelujah. This meeting, I didn't tell my wife to share this. She told me, this is what the Lord has put in my hand. I was so excited tonight when I heard her say, while she was teaching, is, you know, another message I'm building for camp meeting. That the Lord is building in her for camp, for camp meeting. I have not looked into her notes, even this one. I didn't know what she was going to say. She just told me, maximizing multiple misses, she's going to share the story of her life. I said, carry go. Praise God. Amen. Get ready, huh? Oh, we cook and bring to you here. Oh, boy. And we cook good. Look at the pastors that God has put you under. Look at the leaders you have. Look at the leaders. He's a pointer to what God wants to do in you. He's a pointer. Hallelujah. Praise God. My wife and I have been on this path. Listen, you see, and that's one thing I love about God. God gave us, my, I, I say this to my wife, you know, I thank her, she thanks me. You know, God gave us the opportunity to be able to prove these things. 
you understand this? We didn't stumble into success. We didn't stumble into the things we share. My wife and I knew each other when we were both teenagers. We were friends from when we were teenagers and we've been up going like that since. Everything she's talking about, when she said she always wanted to teach, it was as teenagers. When we started, we became prayer partners. I was 19 years old. She was 16 years old. We became prayer partners. Everything she's talking about here, we, when we went to Faith Arena last week for um, at Bishop Margaret's birthday, we're pointing to some of some of them that came with us. See where we used to go and pray, to go and to do our prayer meeting every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we on fast. Every Wednesday was our fasting day, fasting and prayer. We'll come together. It is where the things we tabled down. I knew already as a teenager when we were friends that my wife wanted to teach. I want to teach. I want to teach. I want to lecture. I want to teach. She said those things. Because she told me those things and we prayed about them. Then I would tell her my own. I, I want to raise a generation. I want to do ministry. I want to teach God's word. I want to bring God's light to a generation. Then we would take it up and we pray with fastings. Everything we are walking in today, we talked about it as teenagers and in our early 20s. We didn't stumble into this thing. Uh, it's been long coming. And we have it in our lives. There's nobody that can tell me it doesn't work. And I am telling you, this thing works and it will work for you. Yeah. Ah, there's a reason God sent you to people who have tested and proven it. Yeah. When I tell you I know it like I know my name, I'm not guessing. I'm not guessing. I'm not hoping it will work. I know it works. I know it. And the things I've not yet seen, I know we are intent. Ay, 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 ay. Don't know what I mean? Go and listen to Sunday's message. What did Abraham find? Part two. Have we? He lived in tents. In the land of promise. Because they looked for a city. People ask me, people have asked me, what are you, we hear the way you talk, what are you looking for? The thing I'm looking for, <laughs> the eyes of my spirit have seen it. Huh? And it is that thing, do you understand? I want to bring that thing down, heaven, literally heaven on earth. When I see it on the earth, I will know it. Because I've seen it. God told Moses, he said, build that tabernacle according to the picture I showed you on the mountain. There is a picture in my spirit. Look. Oh, uh, there's a picture in my spirit. There's a picture in my spirit. And until my wife is here, she can tell you. Look, I, look if I don't approve of it in my spirit, if it is not the exact picture of sin, uh -uh. Uh, mm -mm. my wife can tell you. From when we got married, Everything we did in ministry. This one, hey, let's do it like this. I'm not saying this thing yet. I'm not saying this thing yet. What is it that you are looking for? When I see it, I will know. I will know. And I can tell we are closer than ever. Get ready. This is 10 years in one for you. Women's conference is next week. Listen. Brothers be here. It's not just for women. Brothers come. Praise God. Amen. You have a mother. You have a sister. You have a girlfriend. You, you intend to have one and get married to one. Even if you don't, you will have a friend that will get married. So come. You two will be inspired. Amen. How? Then on the 15th. <laughs> Ew, Jesus. Listen. Uh, this is what I'm talking to. All the guest ministers have confirmed they are coming. Listen. All their flights have been booked. Return ticket. All their flights booked. For those traveling, all their flights booked. Return ticket. Business class. Uh, there's an comfort. Bless us. Comfort back. Oh, God.
You will see what God will take us into this month. I'm telling you. You can feel the fever. The camp, the camp theme song is ready. It is crazy. It is crazy. Reverend Q has done it again. Reverend Q has done it again. Hallelujah. Helpline music been into the world. If you've never been in camp meeting, welcome. Don't miss it for anything in the world. Hallelujah. Go online, join our publicity, right? Join the publicity, join the publicity fever. We, joy is, is a fever. What? On Monday, we're going out. Okay, all right, guys. So everybody wants to be a part of this. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sir, so, so why do you always talk like this? I've seen something. I've seen it. I have seen something. And I know it like I know my name. I know it. I know it. Nobody here will be small. You will remember I said these things to you. You will remember and it's not far away. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you blessed tonight? What do we say to Reverend Bumi? <laughs> Hallelujah. Please get this message and listen again. It's heartfelt. Everything she said was so. Was so. Part of what made it difficult is that I am here. I'm not always there with them. So much of this she had to bear alone. And the way I helped her bear it was to, was to pray for her and give her counsel on the phone and then visit when I could. So I, I, I spend more time with you guys than I do with them. So, he's a, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's my boy there. Come, Nima. Come, 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 bro. Come, come. <laughs> Fine boy. Fine guy. Praise God. <laughs> Better much your office. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is his this is his pretty cousin. She she believes that Numa can shine alone. Anywhere Numa is, she must enter. And I give it to her. Praise God. Amen. Oh, she's blessed. We love her, you know. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have to commend him too because, you know, he's, he's nine years old. He's a big boy now. Um, and we're training him to be strong as well. We're training him to be strong. Um, he has to be. That is not always around. But he has to be. Praise God. He has to be. I tell him time and again, take care of, take care of your mommy. Okay? Make sure you don't stress her. Make sure she's fine. Make sure she's good. So you see, he's trying to rise into that. He's a good boy. <laughs> Amen. But trust me, it's been a lot of work. I remember. I know everything. You know, those early stages when I had to do, I, I had to be with them for, I had to extend for about three weeks. I was supposed to be the first time when we got there. You know, so for the first few days, she was, uh, we went to school together for us to go and see the place and then that path that she talked about, you know, so for the next three weeks plus, I was the one taking him. I had to be with him in school because, you know, then he was still a baby. He was like two. He, yeah. So the trial sessions, he had to be there. I had to be there with him because, you know, you see Nigeria, Nigeria. You know, on the first day of school, you just go there, you drop your child, you know, your child is crying. Hey, go, go, they tell you to go. Mother will be crying. You know it's a child that will be mocking you as if you, you, you don't have my go. And they will drag your child into school. You go there thinking, this one, Lyo, 
you will sit down with them. You will stay there or you stay in the school. If he's crying, oh yeah, you know, so, so, oh yeah, see your, see your father here. Uh, so I had the mom or the dad, but she had to be going to the lab, so I had to be there. So I had to, I had to change my flight together. I had to extend it till whenever he could be in school. So I didn't even know when I was going to, uh, by himself and no more crying. So after a while, so after the uh, settled in a bit in class, they will now tell me to step out of the class and wait outside. If he's crying, hey, please come in, come in, come in, just come in. And I'll go there inside. Uh, so the boy showed me for some so for a while. And then after a while, you know, um, he stopped crying. And uh, <laughs> you know, and then when they were sure, then they said I should stop coming. So all the time I would still go there, but I'll stay outside. I would just be in the school till they've, till they've closed school. Until they were sure. So I think that was just to help the child, just knowing that the parent. So the child keeps feeling my father is there, my mother is just around there, so they'll be fine. And they said, I think we should learn those kinds of something. It's not about something. Praise God. Amen. Well, I remember that push path, the push chair, you know. <laughs> and then he would cry and cry, and then he would start giving him all those rap songs, you know. And you had to be holding the phone. You have to find a way to be holding the phone because he wanted it close to him. And after a while, where he now learns to be holding it by himself, you know. And then when he finished, you just you give it back to me, and you just mention one one word in the song, and so you know that he wants to repeat. I know you will. And then they will press it again. They will continue. And you know there were those times where he would cry on the road. One time where he didn't even want to move, he, then he came down from the bush and sat on the third road. I was just screaming there, and then. Uh, there was a police woman there that was just waiting and watching to see whether this African woman will beat her child so that they can put her on handcuffs. Because they know that Africans do that. They beat their children. So she was waiting to see. Yeah, so so she now called, my wife now called me on the phone. So I said, put the phone on speaker. She put the phone on speaker. And I shouted his name from, from beneath to the world. <laughs> When I said, get up! I, uh, it was as if I was there. The boy got up. Sat down the push chair. Quiet till the reach us. <laughs> right. Then it was just two, three. It was still a baby. But so much has changed now. Um, he loves Nigeria. He loves this. He loves this country. He tells them every, every, every time that, praise God, this is my country. I love them. <laughs> praise God. Through all of that, this woman has has beaten all the odds. I know that. I respect her and I love her. I'm telling you. The awards are many. The one you said, well, last count, we're doing over 20 something now. About 20, I mean, how many we counted? She has even forgotten. When we're counting one time, we counted close to about 20, 20, 20 something. What are you talking? Because me, I, you know, as a preacher and concerned, I need to have testimonies around me. So I know our testimony is more than her. I can say it's more than her. Praise God. Brothers, I hope you are learning. I have to love a woman and be involved in her life. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Me too. I am a first class holder by association, I am a master's holder by association. I'm a PSU holder by association. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why I'm not even going after this thing because she has done it for us. Praise God. It... <laughs> Praise God. I just stay in the word, bro. Praise God. I won't teach, man. Praise God. That's another thing. You know a pastor that likes to preach. They have finished preaching. I've almost started my own preaching. Praise God. The God, God bless you. Yeah. Hallelujah. But trust me, you are in for the time of your life in this ministry. And we are not afraid to say it. And listen, we are not in competition with anybody. Neither are we putting anybody down. We have found our assignment and we are running with it. Everybody find your assignment, run with it, and talk about it 
like it is your life's ambition, it is your life's goal, and it is your life's pleasure. Amen. Praise God. Paul, we talk about his calling and his ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are blessed.